Good morning. We're um, continuing our Bible studies, 100 and 365 Bible studies, to introduce you to the different kinds of literature there are in, in the Bible. At the moment, we're looking at the wisdom literature in the Old Testament. And today we're looking at Proverbs chapter 11, verses 9 to 14. And we'll see what it has to say. With words, the godless can ruin their neighbours, but by using their wisdom, the righteous are saved. The city rejoices when it goes well with the righteous, and there is delight when the wicked perish. A city is lifted up by the blessing of good people, but by the words of the wicked, it is ruined. Those who belittle others often um, those who belittle others demonstrate their own foolishness. If you are sensible, you will keep your thoughts to yourself. You can't trust a gossip with a secret. Instead, put your confidence in a trustworthy person. Where there is no leadership, a nation is doomed. Gather many good advisers, and you will be safe. These words come from a part of the book of Proverbs attributed to King Solomon himself. Chapters 10 to 22 of the book of Proverbs probably form the original core of the book. In this part, there appears to have been some effort made on the part of a teacher to arrange the reflections in matching couplets to make it all easier for the students to commit to memory. On the whole, these thoughts are pretty mundane, and this gives the reader the impression that the wisdom school was level-headed, sensible, thoughtful, and not given much to history, myth, or storytelling. The wisdom school is sceptical about the involvement of God in current human affairs, it does look to God as, the, as a first cause and ultimately as a righteous judge. But scholars of this strand of wisdom regard the acquisition of knowledge rather than dependence on God for forgiveness as the principal mission of thoughtful humans. So, in the end, wisdom provides rather a dark and gloomy outlook. And its editor concludes, echoing Job, by saying in Proverbs chapter 30, verses 1 to 4, God isn't with me. God definitely isn't with me, and I'm on my own. I'm more like a beast than a human. I'm bereft of the good sense a human should have. I've not learnt any wisdom at all, and I definitely don't know anything about God. Nobody has ever really understood how the heavens work. Nobody can catch the wind with their hands or is able to wrap water up in a cloth or put boundary markers around the earth. If you know someone who has, tell me. The wisdom school can be compared to the scientific sceptics of our own day who deny any influence of God and who leave us feeling rather bleak in an unfriendly universe, bereft of faith, hope and love. Yes, they have their place, helping us to keep our feet on the ground and not going too far from reality in our flights of fancy, but to give in to their gloom too much would deprive us of much of the pleasure of life, and nearly all of the thankfulness that fills us who believe that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit dwell within the hearts of all who believe. And because of that, we can live free from anxiety and with a smile on our faces. I promise not to dwell in these gloomy places for very long. Tomorrow, we are going to look at some Egyptian wisdom that found its way into the Bible. And I'll see you then.